Unity Behavior was officially released at Unite September 2024. And honestly, I don't think Unity put enough of a spotlight on this tool. This is huge. We finally have a built-in tool for behavior trees with Unity. And I, for one, am extremely excited about this. In this video, you're gonna get an introduction to Unity Behavior. There are a lot of things we're not gonna cover, but this will be enough to get you up and running making your own AI. But don't worry, we will get to those more advanced features in future videos. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dream become reality by shining a spotlight on a new free tool to expedite your AI development. Now to get Unity behavior, make sure that you're on Unity 6. This is a requirement for this tool. Go to the package manager, make sure you're on the Unity registry, and right here at the top, you've got behavior. Go ahead and click install on that. And right now in January, 2025, I'm on version 1.0.7. In future versions, things might look a little bit different, but the concept here is gonna remain the same. Now, once that's installed, you want to go to the samples tab here, which is on a lot of the Unity packages, and they come with a lot of cool stuff like examples, showcases of how to use different things, all kinds of stuff come in these samples. We're going to check out the Unity behavior example in this video. Once that imports, come over to the project panel, go to samples, behavior, then your version, mine's 1.0.7, Unity behavior example, and open up that sample scene. Now, because I'm using URP, we see the pink materials. We can just go to window, rendering, render pipeline converter, and run that material upgrade. And now everything looks fine. In this demo, we can see that there's an agent, and this is the only piece of AI in this entire sample. There's a component here called the behavior agent, and this is really important for any AI agent that you want in your game. It has to have the behavior agent if you're going to use Unity behavior. This is that mono behavior class that will run our behavior tree. It really only has one property, the behavior graph, and based on what you assign there, you'll be able to see the different Blackboard variables and what their current values are. And we'll get to the Blackboard in just a minute. Now, this example behavior graph we can see is right here in our project. So this is an asset that we create, and then we can link to as many different behavior agents as we would like. Then if we have 10 different agents, they can all use the same base graph. And I'm saying graph instead of tree here because Unity Behavior calls their behavior trees behavior graphs. This is because these support additional features that a tree doesn't technically support, such as nonlinear structures where branches can merge back together. This is a pretty powerful feature for our agents. Now, if you want to create your very own behavior graph, you can just go to assets, create behavior, behavior graph. Then if you just double click to open it up, it'll open up a new tab. And if you've used shader graph before, this will seem very familiar. We've got a blackboard on the left and an inspector on the right. A behavior tree has a starting node. And then if we wanted to add some additional nodes, we can just drag down to create a new node. And we can see there's quite a few built-in nodes and they're pretty well organized. Once you select a node, I'll just choose instantiate object. If you dragged down to create a node, it'll automatically hook that up from the node that you dragged from. You can also create arbitrary nodes by pressing space you'll get that exact same window. If you just pick a node, it will not be connected because you didn't drag from a different node. And then we can hook it up wherever we want to in our graph. To delete them, we can just select which ones we want and press delete. On any node, it's likely that we're gonna need some kind of extra data, such as we wanna instantiate some object. We can click this link and choose either variable on our Blackboard or an asset file. If we're going to choose from assets, that's very powerful, so we don't have to add a bunch of stuff to our Blackboard. If we did need to choose something dynamically, then we can choose a variable from the Blackboard. To add variables, we can click New right here, or click the plus button on the Blackboard. Whenever they're on the Blackboard, it does type safe checks, and we can just drag and drop them. For example, if we were to add an integer type, we cannot drag that to this object type. Now, what is a Blackboard? This is where we'll store any variables that the AI needs to know about. This provides a common place for all of our nodes to be able to pull values from. And we'll see an example of some nodes that rely on values and that the values can change at runtime through different nodes in just a minute. Anything we put on the blackboard, we can see on the behavior agent. For example, now if we change this behavior graph on our agent to this behavior graph, we'll see self, some object to instantiate, and that new integer, just like what we see here. These can be set from the scene or from your scripts. Let's undo that change and take a look at this example graph that we get. In here, we can see there are a couple of Blackboard variables, self, target, and a speed. 
on start with repeat turned on, once the graph is executed to the end, it'll come back up around and restart from the top. If repeat is turned off, it will only execute one time. Here, we can see very simply that we're going to start. Self will say some words like, what should I do? And then it's going to pick randomly between these two branches. Should it say, let me think about it and wait for a second and then restart? Or should it say, move to target location, pick a random target from any objects in the scene that have the tag targets, then it'll say, pick me and move to that location. What I really like about how Unity Behavior is designed is this is telling a story. And that's exactly what these are called. On each node, there's a story that says what should happen. And some nodes need a little bit more data than what we can reasonably say in a story. So if we select a node on the inspector, we can see, OK, hey, maybe we want to customize the duration. So if a node seems very simple, like self navigates to target, in some cases, there are a lot of configurations that can help make that feel better. So make sure if you're using a built in node or you make your own nodes that you consider this and that the goal of our graph here is to read like a story and be very easy to read and understand. If we come to the game view and just click play, we can see this in action. They'll say, what should I do? Move to target location, pick me, pick me, then move to that location. Then we restart. What should I do? OK, we'll wait a minute. So wait one second and then restart again. So while this is a very simple example, it does demonstrate for us how we can create a node using the flow controls like the random to pick different branches. Of course, there are more flow controls than just random. We can have conditionals. We can run things in parallel. We can even abort a branch if we need to. There's a lot of stuff built in here, which is really great to see. Unity behavior makes it very easy for us to author AI behaviors in an easy to read and understand way. It's got a bunch of built in nodes, and it also makes it really easy for us to create our own. For example, what we looked at today that self says and then some text is a custom node made specifically for this example. If you're interested in learning more about Unity Behaviors capabilities, let me know in the comments down below. So I know this is a topic the community is interested in. And if this video helped you out, make sure you've liked and subscribed and share this out with a friend who you think will also get value out of this video. If you want to share your support for Lom Academy, there's a few ways you can do that. You can get yourself some Lom Academy merch right here on YouTube. You can use the affiliate links down in the description to do your asset store or humble bundle shopping. Both of those give me a small percentage of the purchase price at no additional charge to you. Or you can also become a YouTube member or a Patreon supporter. You'll get access to a private members exclusive Discord and recognition on every GitHub repository and every video that I release. Starting at the awesome tier, you'll get a shout out like Ivan, Ifiabolus, Mustafa, Angel, Snedden, Trey Briggs, Will B, Nick5454, and Pixel Wizards. And then of course, there's also all of these great supporters as well. Thank you all for your support, and I'll see you on the next video.